um, Bishop Peter Latimo. God bless you wherever you are. Thank you for being available. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You really honor God and we appreciate. And we want to share the word of God today. Oh, hallelujah. As we get to the end of the year, the Lord has commanded me to, call, to release you. To release you. And I want to, I want to, uh, to talk about the release of your healing. The release of your healing. The release of your healing. I say, I know, although we look, we appear to be celebrating, and in some cases, it's true. People are deep within, struggling with, how do I get this healing? How do I get into contact with the reality of my restoration? How do I get healed in this pain? Some of us, if you cannot eat, you can eat some food. You can only just rest and wait because body is under some unique allergy. Your mind is threatened. You are under some strange fear. Fear. You are being haunted by death. Haunted by death. Haunted by people who never care about you. Haunted by threatening extreme issues. But today I have come to say this. You might lack strength within yourself. But the God who could command Red Sea to become a highway for his children is right here with me. And by, he, by his grace... Please, I say, don't give up. Even if your mind has come to a net, can you please wait and know that he is Lord? Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am Lord. God still is giving you a chance to know that he is Lord. The God who was with Moses at the Red Sea, before a miracle could happen, he commanded people to stop making noise. Noise can be in your mind. Noise can be in your mouth. Noise can be in your feelings. Stop it. For God wants to teach you a new lesson. I want you to learn from the Lord. Do not terminate your life. And do not produce terminal statements. And do not utter anything desperate. Please hold your mouth and tell your heart. Wait upon God. He is from everlasting to everlasting. And you never lack chance for his glory. You could be too low. But I say at the end of the, this year. You have offered God the best opportunity for glorification. I declare you are not closing to the new year with problem and oppression. And the Lord wants to really bless you. The Lord wants to powerfully raise your life in Jesus' name. He is our healer. He is our hope. He is the God of power. Let's go to Genesis. Uh, uh, let's go to the Bible. Sorry, let's go to the Bible and see. There are several things that sometimes cause us to be in sin. Because sometimes it's good to, have uh, to be in sickness, to have understanding. If you go to generally, we human beings, being born in this world, are the Adamic nature and curses. Naturally, the world has sicknesses. The world has diseases. They were not there in the Garden of Eden. But because we cannot access the tree of life, this world has some signs of curse. We grow old. We suffer some pain. But I also want to say, in this world, Jesus came and demonstrated power to heal the sick and to offer great hope. In... Uh, 
There are times when you can be sick and when Christ heals you and you never go back to sin, that healing will remain and the sickness will not have access. We can conclude that. If you go to John chapter 5, verse 14, there was a man who was healed after being sick for 38 years, unable to walk, extremely disfigured. And when he was healed, they met with Jesus later in the temple. And the Bible says uh, in verse 14, chapter 5, verse 14, afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. I now decree this word on you. You have been healed. I command healing. See that you have been made well. Sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. There's maybe along the way you are rebellious. Along the way you never cared. Along the way you just fornicated and never sensed that you are causing pain to God who made you in his image until you ate the dub in pain. God forgive you all the sin. See, because of God's mercy, you have been made well. Go and sin no more. There are times people can get sick and you find in your family there are funny attacks because of the sin of others. I read the scripture in the book of Exodus chapter 20 Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse 5. The Bible says, mm -hmm. I hope you are there by God's grace. Uh, that is Exodus chapter 20. The Lord will bless you as you trust him. It, oh, Exodus, sorry. It's Exodus chapter 20. I hope you are, you are there. Verse 5, you shall not, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, you are God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. There is this factor of rebelliousness being propagated in a family. And that persistence or that direction causes a certain kind of sickness plague for the family. We may not, the modern mind may fail to comprehend this, but to us we don't have modern mind and old mind. All what we have is the truth that God gave to rule people in all stages of life. We don't need, we appreciate what you call modern, but please don't think you are modern because 10 years to come, what you call modern will be extinct. But I want to say this. Uh, by the grace of God, of late in hospitals, we have a wide, wide room uh, in hospitals, beds for diseases that are non-infectious. 
not caused by fagai, not caused by any contamination or any form of microorganism. They are caused by either attack or a, a kind of system in the body. And, and doctors now are developing some questions and inquiry when doctor asks, you are suffering from arthritis. Who in your family, either your grandmother, grandfather, and co has this problem? They always ask. The other day there was an issue in my our in-laws, my where my mother came from. My uncle died of cancer. After one year, the uncle that followed him died of cancer. After two years, their sister, that is my auntie, died of cancer. Another one died of cancer. Who cannot see there is an attack there? And I called a group of pastors. We went up to that place and said, we repent the sin of this family and we stop this attack. It is stopped. We need to address this issue and not sit back in defeat and withdraw that there are diseases these days, doctors are struggling with them, and sometimes they tell us it can't be healed, it can only be managed towards your retirement. But I would like us to visit issues and declare forgiveness, declare the masses of God, declare cleansing in families, and stop the spread, the propagation of these curses of sicknesses that are multiplying from generation to generation in a specific family. I say by the blood of Jesus, if there is such an attack in your family, I repent the sins of your forefathers. I repent the sins of your mother and your parents and I declare the blood of Christ in that family and I command death and sicknesses to stop. God, by the blood of Christ, calls you to have favor. There are sicknesses that are purely caused by a demonic attack. A demon came in. A demon came in. And even if you pray for the healing, the problem is that no one is actually sick. It's just the presence of a specific demon with a specific function. If you go to Mark chapter 9 verse 17. Mark chapter 9 verse 17. Mark chapter 9 verse 17. The Bible says, Then one of, one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought, I brought you my son who, was, who has a mute spirit. And whenever, whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. If you go to verse, if you read that scripture, Jesus rebuked the spirit and, and said deaf and damp spirit. Christ did not say I heal you from being damp. I heal you from being deaf. There are times when Christ will say somebody who is deaf. I said I heal you from the problem of being deaf. This time Jesus said deaf and damp spirit, which means it was a demonic presence attack. And the only way to be healed is to get the spirit out. Christ did not say, be healed. He said, death and damn spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Can you imagine Jesus showing the demon the exit door and saying, there's no way, there's no way 
There is no possibility. There is no door of re-entry. Get out and enter him no more. I say as we heard this year, I point at you. There is a demon that has come with a specific attack on you. I command it by its name and faction and its powers. Get out. And I, by the anointing of God, I declare no entry. My brother, my sister, receive the cover of the blood of Christ. Be healed. Go in peace as you end this year. In Jesus Christ's name. There are times God will heal you by waiting for your own will to express. Do you want healing? You know, there's a, an issue in the book of John. John chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible says, John chapter 5, verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Can you imagine in this instance, Jesus is demanding human will to accept healing. Christ has power to heal you. He is. In fact, he is just standing next to you. But the question is, he is waiting for your will to accept. Do you want to be healed? And the man has some stories. Until Christ said, no, gentlemen, you are wasting time. I'm the Lord of Lords. I don't depend on background. I don't depend on your parents. I don't depend on who hates or loves you, who is closer, who is away. I have final word. Christ said, no, 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 no. Rise up. Take your bed. Go home. And the man was healed. There are times God heal you by you personally as a human being accepting his healing. You have been waiting, but God is waiting for you. Saying, Jesus, please heal me. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? And there are times God will heal you by clearing his will. God clears his will. He says, I have come to heal you. I have come to make you whole. Gentlemen, I know you are desperate, but I have come to tell you, I have come to heal you. When God comes with his will to ask you who is sick. If you check Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Mark chapter 1, verse 41. The Bible says, Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his head, and touched him, said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. There are times people are so much in pain, so much in pain, so much devastated. Your soul has no peace. But Christ just come to show you his masses and say, I'm willing. Be healed. This man who was leprous, leper, the society had instilled on him a second disease. Besides being leper, his feelings were low. He was thrown out of the gate, despised. And Jesus knew this man could have a very negative self-concept. There are sicknesses you are in that cause people to despise you and to label you with some funny, funny terms, funny things, so that you are not only sick physically, you are sick emotionally. And to know whether there's love for healing, it will take too long. But God comes around and says, please, I know your emotions are hurt. Your emotions are low. I am willing. Live around what people say. Live alone what the society say. Live alone how they despise you. I, the healer. Live around people. They could not heal you. They could only comment. They could only throw you out. They could only despise you. But I, the source of healing, am willing to be healed. Jesus expressing his will in your healing. May the Lord bless you so much. Oh, Jesus is the healer.
time has come to us this year. Be healed. End this year with joy. I know you are desperate. The sicknesses in several areas of your life, your body, spirit, soul, they are sick in some ways. They are sick in some ways. You know when you talk about healing, sometimes you realize the body needs healing. You know, I was reading an issue in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. This man was paralytic. He was sick in spirit, sick in mind, and sick in body. How is he being healed? The spiritual sickness is reached by demon getting out. The emotional sickness is realized because the demon that tormented the soul is gone. Torment is over. And the physical sickness is healed by this man who is paralytic being completely whole. I say just as the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 May the Lord keep your soul. May the Lord keep your body. May the Lord keep your spirit perfect, peaceful, complete waiting for his appearance. I pray that you proceed living in peace. Just as Christ said, be whole, go in peace. I release you to 2022 by declaring your healing. Be whole, go in peace. Your mind be healed, receive peace. Your heart be healed, be released. And your life be confirmed. May God release a prophetic word. Rebel word for you to live with. Specific for you. In Jesus name. It is done. God bless you.